Hi, everybody. Robert Rutherford here. We're at episode 35. We have Eric Westland here from the Raymond Group over here in Orange, California. He's the superintendent. Yeah, general superintendent. For general Raymond. superintendent for Raymond. And um, I know he's got a ton of experience, so <laughs> really looking forward to hearing his story today. How you doing today, Eric? I'm good. I'm good. It's Thursday. Yeah, man. I like to call that Friday Eve. <laughs> exactly. That's a good, that's awesome, dude. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks a lot for taking some time out of your yeah, day. Easy enough. Uh, everybody's good uh, with the in your circle with the stuff that's oh, been going yeah. around. All the the COVID stuff. It, yeah, this is crazy town. Um, like for me and my family, I, my oldest daughter is pregnant right now, Ooh. and I've got a new baby grandson, so, it, you know, she's nervous as can be, and my wife's nervous, so, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people are nervous, sure. um, especially those of us that are out there working the front lines, if you will. We are working the front lines. I mean, we're out there every day Yeah, in it, Yes. Um, so it's, it's a good thing that we have a job that uh, we're not sitting at home, For but sure. I know our... I know our spouses are nervous, but and our family's nervous. But, what are you uh, bringing home? Yeah, what are you bringing home? I, you know, it's kind of funny. It's like I walk in the door. I got to use the back door. Got to walk in the laundry room, strip down, and hit that shower. I'm showering in a in a different bathroom in the house every day than what I normally do, just because that way my wife can sterilize it and she feels safer that way. All right. I'm doing whatever feels whatever makes the wife at home feel safer. That's what I'm up to. Sure. Plus bringing home the paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> and you're able to do that, that. That makes them feel safer too. You betcha. <laughs> you bet. You yep. bet. So Eric, you've been in the industry for how many years now? I got in in January of 91. Yeah. January of 90, 1991. That is 1991. Yeah. yeah. Started out in, uh, as a stalker scrapper. Yeah. Pushing a trash buggy. Got it. Yeah. Starting at the bottom. Started at the bottom, yeah. And uh, it was a Cal Poly Pomona, um, one of their, uh, that was a classroom building way back then. And then my second job was actually a pretty cool job. It was uh, over at uh, Indiana Jones, which was a oh, really wow. fun project. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That was a fun one, especially your second job. No doubt. Know, so much theme work and, uh, you know learning a bunch of different stuff and all the rock work that was there. And it was a lot of fun stuff on that project right out of the get start, you know, yeah. wasn't just metal studs and drywall. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So you're actually a pretty young guy to be a superintendent. <laughs> you know, I get that a lot, but I'm, I'm 50. Yeah. Well, I'll be 50 at the end of this year. Congrats, but, uh, man. Yeah. It's usually, uh, most of, uh, my predecessors, uh, Pete Byrne was my predecessor and he told me, it's a 10 year slot. He goes, after 10 years, you're pretty much wore out because it's a, uh, it's a tough spot. Yep. So like he said, make sure you're ready to retire in 10 years. Got so it. That's the, uh, that's the goal. Sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you have a yeah. plan for that. Yeah, well, that's the plan, right? Uh huh. You know, hopefully that'll work out. All right. Yeah. All right. So who got you in the trade? Um, uh, my father got me in the trade. Um, I'm third generation carpenter. Oh, wow. Um, my grandfather was a carpenter and a machinist. Uh, my dad was a carpenter his entire life. And then uh, all my dad's buddies are all carpenters. <laughs> Uncles were carpenters. It's grew up. It's in just it. a way of life. Yeah, yeah I was, it's in your blood. Uh, my dad, when I was young, when I was in you know grade school, he was running his own business. And you know, summer times were uh, me going to, with him on the job site. I can remember being you know 11, 12 years old, pushing trash buggies and and nailing off drywall when I was, you know, 11, 12 years old, because he'd give me a few bucks and it was, you know, something to, you know, whatever. I needed a new BMX, you know, hand grips or something, whatever. I was up to something and, you know, that yeah. was a way, er, way to earn some money, Yeah. Got it, got it. So yeah. what kind of machining was your grandfather doing? Um, he worked on, which is really cool, he worked for uh, Namel. will come to be here in 10 or 15 minutes, the company he worked for, but uh, he worked on a lot of, um, government stuff. So he was, he was working on the stealth fighter back in the sixties. Oh, wow. Building nuts and bolts and stuff. And he was mm -hmm. actually the, it, you know, he was the one making sure all those nuts and bolts weren't going to fail. <laughs> so he was in their quality control department. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Making mm -hmm. sure that 
everything was right. Got it. Yeah. Got it. And and he he went from being a carpenter to a machinist or vice versa. And, and a little bit of both. He was after World War II when he came back. You know, he built houses in back east, and then he came out here, and he he always was building something. It mm-hmm. was it was almost like that was his. Uh, and I do the same thing nowadays. And when on the weekends, I'm there's always some project at the house. Sure. I would much rather do it myself and then have somebody pay to do it. it to me that seems silly well a lot of times when you pay them it looks like shit when it's done and you look at it and you're like <laughs> well there is that aspect of it too you're yeah. like i could have done better than that and yeah. i don't even know what i'm doing <laughs> you know yeah i, I feel you yeah it, i mean in, in in my house growing up i mean my my dad was always that way it didn't matter if it was tile or plumbing or electrical mm-hmm. we were going to figure it out and get it done and and um, over the years i mean I was able to, me and my younger brothers actually in the trade as well. It was, we were able to build my dad's retirement house. He lives in today, you know, big, you know, 2,500 square foot house in the hills in Fallbrook. It's beautiful. Nice. Uh, You know, he's, he's living in a way too nice of a house for a carpenter to be living in. That's for sure. Well, shit, man. He's got a killer pension. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's that. Yeah. You know, and he's got this big old beautiful house and, you know, guys that are down the hill from him go, what you do for a living? I was a union carpenter. What? <laughs> it's pretty funny because yeah. you know one guy owns a huge electrical company. They literally service all of the uh, Albertsons mm-hmm. across the nation. Got it. And he lives down the hill from my dad, <laughs> so you know, nice. It, he's kind of like, how are you living on top of that big old hill? Good being for him. a union carpenter, but yeah, you know, made some wise investments here in, sure. in Orange County, and yeah, uh, you know. Yep. And then it, it built it out of metal studs? Built it out of metal studs, yeah. The yeah. only wood in that house is the plywood for the second floor. Yeah, exactly. everything else is metal. Got it. Got yeah. did he help you? Oh, I, I he uh he was out there sweating with me every day. Yeah. I mean I man, I did weekends down there for gosh, eight months. Mm-hmm. Just about every weekend I was down there. My wife was getting to the point where she's like, Hey, I guess I got to ride down there with you on the weekends. Cause you're going to be down there no matter what, if I was want to spend time with you. Sure. But you know, me and my brother looked at it like, Hey man, this is my dad's, you know, retirement home. This is, you know, we're going to do this with him. It was yeah. fun. It was a lot of fun. I'll bet. You know, I'll bet. It, I mean, we did everything from running the backhoe, digging the, digging the footings to pouring the concrete and, and building the house. It was yeah, a lot of fun. Right. Yeah. It was wow. a lot of fun. Good for you. Yeah. It Good was for a lot him. Of fun. It was, it, you know, had some fun. I had some fun doing it. You know, he, he comes down. I, I was running a big old dozer. There's rocks on his property that are so huge that they're like minivans. And uh, I was running a big old dozer, moving some of them around so we could actually get a clear driveway. And he comes walking down the hill one day, and he he looks at me. He goes, "Hey, uh, I don't know what's going on with the bobcat. I'm in. It's just not running right." He goes, "You want to come up and and you know take a look at at it with me? Mm-hmm. See if you can figure out why it's not running right." Yeah, yeah. So I'm climbing out of the dozer. He goes, no, no, go ahead and just drive up. I'm thinking, just walk up. I, okay, whatever. So I get back in the dozer and I drive it up the hill. I get up the top of the hill. He had flopped it over on its side. That's why he needed the dozer up the hill. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's not running good. That's why it's not running good. It was pretty funny. Awesome. Yeah. So was did he start in residential or was he in the commercial um, aspect so of it? When he first got into the trade, um, he was doing a lot of tilt-up buildings mm. in the 70s and stuff. He was doing a lot of tilt-up work. And that was the birth of tilt-up yeah. in the 70s. Yeah. I worked for a company called uh, Reed Timber Construction, and he worked for them for years. And then uh, for about 10 years, he ran his own company. And then in early 90s, actually about 89, 90, right in there someplace, he went to work for Raymond. And he worked for Raymond um he's been retired now eight years now yeah eight years now so he worked for yeah. you know, about 25 years with raymond he he worked everywhere from orange county uh vegas um he did you know caesar's palace in vegas mm-hmm. um did some of the other smaller jobs the silverton was one of the other ones he did and then uh he opened up our shop when we went down to san diego with ken jensma ken jensma asked him hey man I'd really like you to come down with me and open up this shop down here. So, mm-hmm. which he loved because he was living in San Diego County at the time anyway. So he was making the drive to Orange County out of San Diego every oh, day. Oh, got it. Just because that's where he'd been wanting to live. He'd been wanting to live in Fallbrook area since the mid '80s. Got it. And he wasn't able to talk my mom into moving down there till, uh, you know, 
late eighties, early nineties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. So he had one, he had a nice career. Oh yeah. He had a great career. Yeah. Yeah. And he's what, a fantastic me- mechanic too. I, I learned a lot from him. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> some of the guys I look back at some of the guys I was lucky enough to be around, uh, you know, it, it, it really boils down to paying attention to those really good men that are around you and going, <laughs> that guy knows what he's doing. Yeah. I better pay attention. Well, and, and the, just learning from those guys. Sure. And the and, thing is, is when you're working with guys that really don't know what they're doing. <laughs> that's what you're learning. It, Nothing. Well, <laughs> you're not learning anything, but you, you get to um, sometimes you don't even realize that you're learning until you're put into a situation where you were actually really paying attention to the guys that knew what they were doing. Yeah. You know, so that that helps out a lot. Yeah, it's funny because, I mean, I was... I was a first, second stage apprentice, and I was working with a guy named Tommy Center. And, you know, people go, who's that guy? Well, at Raymond, he was one of our best mechanics ever. Mm-hmm. He ended up becoming our general superintendent in Vegas. Got when it. We opened up our Vegas shop, so after Mel. And uh, you look at that and go, that guy made it to the top, mm-hmm. being the best mechanic, one of the best mechanics we had. And sure. I was lucky enough to be his apprentice for two and a half years. Oh, you worked with him every day? Oh, I worked with him for, yeah, a long time. Maybe it wasn't two and a half years, but I bet it was two years I worked with him pretty, pretty solid. Nice. You know, and that, that was a huge benefit to me. Yeah. You know, some of the other guys I've worked with, Dwight Carr was a great mechanic, you know, Mm -hmm. field superintendent for Raymond for, you know, 25 years. Mm -hmm. That's, that's one of the things that Raymond that's, you know, stands us apart. The, the longevity at the company. Yes. Is is insane. I mean, th- we have so many guys that have 20 years, 25 years, sure, 30 years, yeah, well, 35 years. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, great company to work for. They take care of their men. Well, it 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 really starts at the top making sure that we keep a good steady workflow. And that it sounds like a silly thing, but it's extremely difficult to be able to bid jobs, win jobs and always keep the same amount of men or pretty close to the same amount of men working all the time. That's a very difficult thing to do because yeah. the schedules jump all over the place. Job sure. that was supposed to start doesn't start. Now you, now the office is scrambling like crazy trying to win a couple small jobs to so that we can keep that, you know, 350, 400 men rolling all the time. And, and that is where I think Raymond does a really good job mm-hmm. of keeping those guys for a long period of time. I, I got – I got a couple taping foreman and they had 35 years with the company. Is that right? You know, wow. And these are, these are great, man. I mean, <laughs> I, I laugh cause I see some of the tape and stuff that these guys do. And then I walk in other projects and I go, I've got the best tapers. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and I do the same thing with plaster too. I, I sure. you know, walk on it. We're, we're doing the Weston over here. It's just a few blocks from here actually. And you know, KCS West is the uh, GC on that one. And, and every day, we drop a section of scaffold out there and the, you know, superintendents are going, this is ridiculous. How can it look this good? Yeah. You know, they're amazed. And I'm like, no, this is just how we do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we do it like this. We, we take the extra steps that some guys don't. Sure. We've learned a lot of speed tricks and we've learned a lot of really good tricks. Mm-hmm. We got tricks to get rid of. We don't have scaffold ties. I'm not going to tell you how we do that, but we got ways to figure that out. Yep. And it's amazing. It, you know, how much nicer a plaster job looks when it's all said and done, when it's done right. Exactly. It, you know, and having the talent, it, you know, having the talent of, you know, Victor's running that one over there and Casey's his super, uh, Casey McLean is a great plaster, you know, plaster guy. He's one, probably one of the best in the industry. Mm-hmm. But, and that's what I'm saying. When you, when you have these guys that have been around in the trade and all their years of experience, man, it, you, the youth, <laughs> Young guys listening to this, man, pay attention to those old guys. You think they're old and you think they don't know squat. They've spent 30 years of learning a little bit every day. Yep. Uh, you know, our industries, we should get doctorates for I what agree. we do. I agree. And uh, if if people could understand the level of which a good quality building is, I think uh, people would – we respect the the construction industry a lot more. Um, it's to me, <laughs> I tease a fireman buddy of mine. 
<laughs> and he, he laughs at me every time I say this, but I'm going to keep saying it. He gets to save all the ones that couldn't figure out how to get out of the building. We've already saved everybody else. Because yeah. we gave them the fire rated corridors to get down. Sure. We saved them. Yeah. Long before he even showed up. That's right. You that's know? right. And that's producing a building that's going to last exactly the way it's designed. And that's construction workers, man, saving people's lives. And people don't see it that way, but that is the reality of it. The firemen show up, they got five, six guys in a truck. They can't save 300 people coming out of a building. They exactly. can't. Sure. Uh, it's You're just right. not reality. Exactly. If we don't build re buildings right, mm -hmm. those people don't get out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's, or, you know, we do shoddy framing and, and a wall falls down and crushes a bunch of them when they're trying to get out of a hallway or something. And that's, that's the kind of stuff that people need to realize construction workers have a lot to do with how we survive really bad incidents sure, <laughs> or fires or earthquakes. You know, you yeah. look in, in Southern California, earthquakes, people don't die from earthquakes in Southern California. Not like, not like they do in other countries. That's right. In other That's countries, right. man, everything falls down on top of them. Mm -hmm. And you know, yeah, we, we have a lot to do in the construction industry to make sure that that happens. You'd be, you guys, anybody who doesn't know, doesn't realize how much goes into a building. It's amazing to, to deal with seismic events. Sure. And what that does to save people's lives. You know, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it is. It is. It sounds like you have uh, you have a lot of passion and pride <laughs> in what you well, do. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's my it's my chosen trade. Sure, you know. I, yeah. Did you ever think about doing something else? I actually thought about being a fireman at one at one point because some of my uncles are firemen and stuff. Mm -hmm. I actually thought about doing that. Sometimes I look at it and go, "Huh, eh, they got it pretty good." And then other times I look at it like my one fireman buddy. I look at it and go, "He's not home with his his wife and kids every night." No, that's a tough way to make a living. It is. Well, they're putting their life on the line. You know, they never know. Yeah, we put our lives on the line too, but nobody but really respects that. That's very true too. Yeah, that is very true. You know, more construction workers die every year than than firemen and policemen, but uh, we don't get the uh, we don't get held up on a pedestal like they do. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, and and there's been uh, since you've come in, there's been a lot of new safety. Oh yeah. <laughs> stuff that's come into the industry too oh yeah i yeah. look back at, at safety when we got in the trade you, you you closed your eyes and you turned your head when you were using a chop saw and yeah one, and you stick your finger in your ear so you didn't get a little hot one down your ear yeah it's yeah. it's kind of funny some of that stuff you know back in the day compared to the way it is now and uh, yeah know. yeah and, and and it's it's for the better it's slowed, oh yeah it's, it's definitely slowed, for the better it slowed production down a bit but uh it's yeah. it's better at the end of the day for sure oh yeah I mean, sure. I could remember when well, you never wore gloves. You nope. just you had a you had a a remnant or a roll of electrical tape. You know, got yep. hang and laugh, man. Back in the day, mm -hmm. this guy Vern Fisher, I worked with years ago. God, that guy would bleed me constantly. But uh, I think that was his way of uh, breaking in apprentices. Yep. But you, you hung laugh all day long without any no any gloves. gloves on your hands, man. Mm -hmm. it, you'd be fish hooked all day long, and you just grab that electrical tape and. Yep. Patch that hole. Patch exactly. that hole. Just yeah. wind yeah. it up. It was just the way it was. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's come along. Well, if you wore gloves, you were a wimp. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You were considered a sissy if you even thought about it. You, you would actually be ridiculed. Oh, yeah. On the job. Yeah. It, would, um, it wasn't a good place to be. No. Yeah. I mean, you it, know. It, you know, it was it was a whole other version of uh, ridicule. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we what? do we do a, a light teasing on a job nowadays, and it it's considered uh, you know you're being tough on them. Well, you could when go I was into in a trade. lawsuit. Oh yeah, you know. I can remember my dad pulling the uh, the safety back on a sixteen penny nail gun and firing off rounds at me if I wasn't moving fast enough. <laughs> That'll get you going. That'll get you moving. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, leave good sized welts on you because you ain't moving fast enough. <laughs> And Did you work with him on, on projects? Um, let's see. I have worked on it. It's, it's going back a ways because, you know, you, you, it's funny when you're first in the trade with your dad. I worked on a few jobs with him, and then I got sent to another project. Mm -hmm. He's on another project, and then yeah. I became a foreman, and then you were almost never on the same job with him. Sure. Um, 
Cal Poly Pomona, we did back in the day. Uh, Soka University, worked at Soka University with them a little, little for a short term. Um, Mission Viejo Mall, when we did Mission Viejo Mall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think uh, that's probably about it. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah, those three you, projects. You, you got it. You say you have a brother in the trade. Yeah, I got a brother in the trade too. Yeah. Is he with Raymond as well? Yes, he's with Raymond as well. Yeah. So your whole career has been with Raymond. My whole career, I've been blessed to have my entire career with Raymond. That's yeah. really nice to hear. <laughs> They've kept you busy and 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 yeah, loyal I, to you and you're loyal to them. Yeah, yeah. Well, most of us that have been working for the company for a long time like to say we we bleed pink and blue. Yeah, that's you know? the, that's the color scheme. Yeah, that's the co- company colors, and that's what we bleed. Yeah, you know, and it's and it's. It's, we work for them, they're working for us. It's, you know, Mm -hmm. you look at our mission statements and and what the company stands for and, and, you know, what Travis portrays into the company and what he tells us he wants. He wants us to have that mutual respect and we're working hard for him and he's working hard for us. If we're not all working hard for each other, you know, he's always got some nautical theme because he's a sailor so he's always got some kind of nautical theme that he likes to throw on it but it's you know he's he's always trying to create this bond between us we we're a big company yeah fairly large company Mm -hmm. but we try to keep the company as more like a family the best that we can and that's the way carl wanted it you know Mm -hmm. that's the way the the original owners that's the way he wanted it yeah he he wanted that that attachment between the the office and the owners and the field staff because he under they understand that we can't do it without each other it's it, the bottom line it's it can't be done you can and, bid all the shit you want but if you don't have the labor to put it up in the air it ain't gonna get done yeah it ain't gonna get done you know, you know? so it's uh making sure everybody's taking care of each other too they, they can hang it up oh, yeah yeah they can close the doors they'll yep. be fine yeah. but uh they they have that um that drive, yeah. you know, to, to keep the wheels turning for everybody. Yep. And they're, they're feeding a lot of mouths. Oh, yeah. You know, so yeah. it's, uh, what's, what's the biggest project that you ever worked on in the field? Uh, the biggest project I ever, uh, I, was, I was the field foreman or field superintendent on the Wilshire Graham project. So I oh, was, Jesus. yeah, I got to run that one. That was the largest project I ever got to run. Yeah. That, how many floors did you guys handle on that one? Um, we were from the 11th floor to the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All the lower floors were handled, handled by standard. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, that was... Uh, yeah, it was a few, big one. A few sheets of board in that one, huh? Yeah, there's a few sheets of board in that one. I wish I could remember all of those numbers, man, because they were all big. But, uh, yeah, it, the impressive thing about that job was just the sheer magnitude of it, but the... Everybody thinks that uh, pods are the way to go, and uh, on that job, it made it tough. That it, was potted, huh? Yeah, it was potted. Yeah, the the restrooms on that one were potted. Huh. And just to create that sequencing, mm-hmm. you know, the glazing and everything else to actually create that sequencing so it worked, mm-hmm. we got to the point where we had a three-day schedule for framing out an entire floor. We would frame an entire floor in three days. What the hell happened out there? <laughs> It was, it was crazy. It wow. was crazy. Yeah, we were moving like you wouldn't believe. You must have had some phenomenal coordination. We were, we were two hundred and fifty men deep on that project, just working for Raymond. Jesus. Um, the man lift never. Those, those guys were working twelve hour shifts. Yeah. Uh, you know, or, and the man lifts never stopped. And Saturday and Sunday was was also a day that was a normal work day. <laughs> yeah just because you there wasn't enough time in the day to get materials in sure and trash out yeah and that stuff got done after hours for the most part and it was around the clock to make that tick at that kind of pace and you yeah. you coordinated all of that in the <laughs> well field. not just me well it, it takes it, a team absolutely and it, was, yeah. it was uh it was a large team and and turner on that job was there's a great team uh, of those guys at, at turner that that helped that project out and you know we jumped alongside of them and we ran that big old monster to the top yeah it was it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun 
being on that project, riding up that man lift, you know, I've been on 30 story buildings, you know, lots of them. But as soon as you get past that 30th floor and the 50th floor, now you're looking down at all the other buildings around you. Yeah. 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 It, it's sure. a different, it's a different feeling when yeah. you're looking at, when you're looking out and you're standing on a floor and you look out there and you're looking down at helicopters that are, <laughs> right. you know, <laughs> flying over the freeway, the yeah. newscasters, and you're like, oh, okay, that's weird. Yeah. I've, I've never I'm up here. Yeah. I'm up here. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Yeah. I, we, we made some trick, uh, spiral radius trims up on, in the lobby. Yes. And the lobby's up on the top floor. Yeah. There was, there was some fun stuff on the, in the, if you've never been there, you can go up to the bar and stuff. The bar area up there is beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it really is. The rooftop top bar is a really cool place to go to. It's just a, just a neat place. You know, that spiral staircase Yes, up in the top there, we, we, yeah, they called us up to bend all those trims and stuff. And they actually wanted me.